in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. We come always to thank God for the blessings that God has bestowed upon us with the way God has led us through this past week. Let's acknowledge now that sometimes we forgot how close God is to us and how the Lord can make all the difference. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. A great king am I, says the Lord of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations. And now, O priests, this commandment is for you. If you do not listen, if you do not lay it to my heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you and of your blessing, I will make a curse. You have turned aside from the way and have caused many to falter by your instruction. You have made void the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. I therefore have made you contemptible and base before all the people, since you do not keep my ways but show partiality in your decisions. Have we not all the one Father? Has not the one God created us? Why then do we break faith with one another, violating the covenant of our fathers? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I busy not myself with great things, nor with things too sublime for me. In A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we were gentle among you as a nursing mother cares for her children. With such affection for you, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well so dearly beloved had you become to us. You recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery, working night and day in order not to burden any of you, we proclaim to you the gospel of God. And for this reason, we too give thanks to God unceasingly that in receiving the word of God from hearing us, you receive not a human word, but as it truly is, the word of God, which is now at work in you who believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. 
They tie up heavy burdens hard to carry and lay them on other people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor, banquets, and seats of honor in synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and the salutation, Rabbi. As for you, do not be called Rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. We have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master. You have but one master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Both the psalmist and St. Paul writing his, this first letter to the Thessalonians uses as an example a nursing mother. How much more gentle do they describe who they're trying to emulate by their kindness and their compassion than a mother taking care of her child? Because that seems to be a, the most you know, touching example that you can you know, kind of call up to remind people of what you know, God is all about and his love and kindness. Even in the Old Testament, we find God referring to himself. Could a mother forget her children? Even if she could do that, I will never forget you. On my hands, I've written your names in the palms of my hands. We skip the other side too, though. Jesus has arrived in, in Jerusalem. This is near the end of Matthew's gospel. So this is about the time that soon he'll undergo his passion and his death. And so he has complaints to make about the leaders of the people because they have not been faithful to God. They're more interested in getting attention for themselves and building up their own reputation. And that's not what faith is all about. But then we see whoever wrote that Psalm, and we see St. Paul. They have learned something as they have developed a relationship with God, a relationship in which love is paramount in the whole relationship, that God loves us unconditionally. And the fact that Jesus came into this world, suffered and died and rose, is the proof of how much we're loved by God. That's kind of a tough way of looking at it. But then to think of a mother holding her baby, making sure the baby is fed and taken care of and watched over carefully, how gentle God is at the same time, how gentle St. Paul was. Sometimes they get the idea that Paul you know, had quite a, you know, a temper. And I think possibly he did. But also he knew how to you know, pull the reins and stop himself from going off too far. He had gotten word from them, this is you know, part of the letter, that they were worried about what was gonna happen because some of the people in the community that Paul had baptized and it brought them the good news, that some people had died. They were afraid that if they died before Jesus comes back, then they will be left out. So one of the important things about this letter to the Thessalonians, and it's the earliest writing of any of the books in the New Testament. This is written before the Gospels, written before the Acts of the Apostles, written before Revelation. This is the first of the letters. And first of all, he takes away their fear that if somebody has died, they'll be overlooked. Rather, that they'll be the first to be raised up. He'll be the first to see God face to face. But in the meantime, rather than to be worried about you know, when you're called or not, to remember the thing that is so important 
is the compassion and the mercy of God. Sometimes if we can get lost in the, you know, thinking about God who created the world and created everything that's in the world and, and everything else, God doesn't forget the little things. The little things so often are the most important things. What could be more important than realizing how much God loves us? God loves us enough for Jesus to die for us so that our sins will be washed away and there'll be no problem of us seeing God one day face to face. At the image of a gentle woman caring for her child. When in that society, women were not looked upon as very important, God saw how important women are. Jesus saw how important women are, how important everyone is. Everyone has a role to participate in, and every role is important. Where would we be without mothers? Where would we be without those who nourished us and took care of us. And so what better example? A mother is truly needed. No one can take her place. A mother reminds God of how important it is to be gentle when you have you know, unlimited power, unlimited force. The same person who would be so gentle and kind to a, a child or a person in need is the same one who could stop a storm, same one who could stop a war, same one who would be there for anything and everything. But we need to remember who God is and who we are before God. We are God's children. We are the ones that he loves. He loves us for a reason because he cares for us, because we are his. But at the same time, too, there's some, something that we need to do. Let us respond. Respond to this love that God has for us. Not to turn away, not to hold back when we could love another person, not to depend upon God to defend us when we're wrong, but rather to have God who can be so gentle to remind us of how important it is for us to be gentle as well. To be caring and understanding. And when we can do all of that, then God becomes more evident in our own lives because it's in, he's in our life and because we are able to treat people in a way that God would treat them. Then we give them the hope that they will find God in their life as well. And they too will become a little more gentle, compassionate and understanding, more caring and less judgmental, more worried about other people than ourselves. And knowing that if we do what God calls us to do, God will take care of us as well. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ, our teacher and Lord, gathers us together to worship. During National Vocations Awareness Week, we lift up our hearts and prayers to the Father through him. For the Pope, bishops, and all priests, May they continue to guide the people of God in truth and holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may be united in professing her faith in Jesus Christ to a troubled world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That seminarians receive the graces they need to become holy priests who speak the truth in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young men and women from our parish will respond to the church's tremendous need for priests and religious sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we ask God to help us grow in the virtue of humility. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all priests may be strengthened in their vocations, and that all the faithful may support their priests with prayer, gratitude, and active collaboration. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests and religious men and women who have served our parish, both living and deceased, and for all who have been called from this life may rest in the peace of God's love. We pray for Joan von Weissen and especially for Kathy Lawler for whom this 5 p.m. vigil mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today at the cathedral, one of the priests of, the, of our diocese who for about 15 or 20 years now has been alone to the, the Vatican as, and is a member of their diplomatic corps. Father Walter and I saw him last year in Vienna. He was ordained an archbishop today at the cathedral and he will become one of the, the ambassadors now. He'll be going to Bangladesh. Um, it's a, one of the third world countries. And, yet, and it's almost totally non-Christian but he's, he's ready to go and, and he will still do a good job. One of his first assignments was in, to Rwanda when he was a secretary to the ambassador at that time. It was right after the massacre of so many people. Talked about in one town, there were 3,200 orphan children after the massacre that went, went through the whole, the whole country. We pray for Father Kevin, now Archbishop Kevin, for all those who serve in the, the Vatican throughout the world, who represent all of us, that God watch over, protect them, and they realize how important it is they be servants to God's people. We pray for the Lord. Lord hear and we offer up all of our intentions through Mary's intercession. Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning, we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together, let's pray in the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with each other a sign of God's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
blessed are the kind, the merciful ones shall mercy receive. Blessed are the good, your heart shall see God because you believe. Blessed children come, grow peace for a planet still choking with hate. Persecuted ones, for you all the blessings of heaven await. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming. God's glory revealed. Let your goodness shine. The lost are restored. The broken are healed. All will be fulfilled. The law and the prophets have shown us the way. Heaven comes to earth. Rejoice and be glad for creation's new day. be glad for heaven is coming rejoice be glad for heaven is coming rejoice be glad for heaven is coming to you For those watching at home will pay the actual spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
Since they cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come away spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We pray the prayer to St. Michael for the safety of peoples throughout the world. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Don't forget, this is the night we fall back an hour. You don't want to get to church too early tomorrow. Well, you won't have to come tomorrow, but somebody else might. <laughs> But that's, I think that's the only announcement. And so let us pray. <clears throat> May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. And have a great week, everybody. You too, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give praise to you.